Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi my name's Zoe and welcome back to another true crime video and this is actually another unsolved murder case so I just want to say as well thank you to my Patreons and if you are interested in becoming a Patreon the link will be in the description box below also I apologise if you're going to hear background noise but there's crazy things going on in my house at the moment and I cannot avoid it and I need to film this video today we are talking about the murder of Josephine Batchall Josephine Batchall was 39 years old she was happily married and she had three children the eldest being 12 years old and the whole family lived together in Malden in Essex. In 1974, Josephine was unemployed and she was looking for a part-time job just to earn a little bit of extra money for her family. Because they didn't have internet, the main way that they would look for work and show their willingness to work was through the local newspapers. And this is what Josephine decided to do. Josephine had put an advertisement in the Situations Wanted column in the Malden and Burden newspaper. The advertisement read, Lady, late 30s, seeks part-time employment in or around Malden, on transport, anything considered, previous experience banking able to tap. Josephine did receive a response and it wasn't something that she was expecting. She was very shocked by the response that she got. A man called Peter contacted Josephine with a modelling offer. He was looking for a woman to model women's cosmetics and possibly a woman to model women's clothing for his own portfolio as he was a photographer. Josephine was excited, like I said, she didn't expect anything like this. She was expecting a more boring, basic job role, so she decided to accept Peter's offer. So Josephine and Peter did decide to meet up, but for some reason, Peter stood her up every single time. She didn't notice any red flags as he always had a reason why he couldn't make the meeting. Whether he was busy at another shoot or something just came up, there was always a valid reason why. Despite them being unable to meet in the beginning, they did go on to have many successful meetings in public places. These meetings were set up so Josephine could get to know Peter. It was so she could find out more about him and grow more of a personal relationship with him. Once he had met up a couple of times and Josephine finally trusted Peter, it was her idea that he actually was to meet her in her own home. She decided that she finally trusted him enough and she also wanted Peter to take pictures of her in her back garden. On the 29th of October 1974, Josephine received a call from Peter. He was quite flustered, he had been let down by another employee of his and he needed Josephine's help. He asked Josephine if she'd be able to meet him in Cheltenham. He had also offered her around £100 in commission. And back in the 70s, this was a lot of money, so Josephine agreed. She left her home around 6pm and she left her three children at home. But for some reason, Josephine never returned home. She was reported missing very quickly. Like I said, she had three children, so they knew that if their mother said that she would be on that evening and she didn't turn home, they knew something was wrong. So they was very concerned when she didn't return. Also, she wasn't the type of person to just leave her children without them knowing where she was or what her plans were or what time she would arrive home. On the 1st of November 1974, just three days after being last seen, Josephine's body was discovered. It was discovered in a field of Berwick Green Lane and this was around 35 miles away from Josephine's home. She was fully clothed and face down in a shallow pond. Her hands were also tied in front of her. When an autopsy was conducted, it was said that Josephine wasn't sexually assaulted, but she had been strangled to death. 
And also an interesting fact, investigators actually said that Josephine died at 8.10pm. This is the time that her watch had stopped at and they assume if she was pushed or it had got damaged during her death then that would be the time that she died. Investigators also said she was more than likely pushed from a moving vehicle after she was killed and that would be why she was in the position she was in. While investigating Josephine's murder, police discovered Peter and they discovered that Josephine had been meeting Peter. This instantly made Peter a prime suspect. So police started their search for Peter. Police had a tough time trying to find out who Peter was as more than likely Peter wasn't his real name. All they had to go off was small bits of information that Josephine had told other people. With this information, they did manage to come up with a description of Peter. And the description is as follows. Now I'm going to read this off my notes so I get it correct. In his early 30s, tall, heavy built, knowledgeable about perfumes and women's toiletries and a competent photographer. They also tracked down three other women who had put adverts in the paper just like Josephine and they had been approached by Peter but they had refused his offer. They hadn't took him up on his modelling offer. After Josephine's murder, a number of witnesses did come forward. One of them claiming that they saw a woman who fitted Josephine's description at around 7.15pm and this witness saw Josephine on Collingham Road with him. She seemed to be having some sort of trouble with her car as her bonnet was up. Another witness also claimed to see Josephine in a pub around 10.30pm that night in Godista and she was apparently accompanied by a male. Since the witness information, there really hasn't been any information on this case, whether that be people involved or leads or witnesses. Nothing has been, nothing has been found since. A 68 year old man was arrested and questioned about Josephine's murder. A cold case team had reopened Josephine's murder in 2009 and they launched new appeals and some new information did come in. The man who was arrested was later released without charge and since there has been no change in Josephine's case. Police are still looking for new information and are urging the public for help with appeals. Sadly, Josephine's husband spent the rest of his life trying to find out what happened to his wife and sadly he passed away. Her three children who are now all in their 40s still work very closely with police and they are trying everything they can to find out what happened to their mother. So that is all for today's case. Again, I apologise the noise in the background is horrendous today but there has been nothing I can do to try and avoid that. I have children, I can't help it. But I hope you still managed to enjoy this case. I just wanted to give a little announcement. If you've not had social media, you probably won't know, but my True Crime Week is going to start on the 22nd of July and I have some amazing creators jumping on with me. So if you wanna get videos early or catch any more secret announcements before I actually announce them to the public, go and check out my Patreon because that's the place to be. Or if you can't afford that or can't physically support me, I understand that's fine. Just give this video a big thumbs up because YouTube's algorithm just really doesn't like true crime videos and isn't suggesting the content that you like to see. So please give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my... I don't even think I told you to subscribe. If you're new here... Subscribe to my channel and also turn on that bell notification so you're notified every single time that I post. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye.